Praise God for the praise and worship. Everything that has gone thus far. We anybody ready for the best part? Anybody ready for the meat? We done had the advertisers. Now it's time for the meat. Woo, hallelujah. I already make me a woman of God. Well worthy. Ready. Hallelujah. To break that word. Woman of God that God has equipped. God has given the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding. Who would want to sit on a woman of God like that? Amen. Faithful, meek, mild, understanding, courteous, kind. Thank you, Jesus. We praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, point your hand toward the next lady. No other than our own, the next lady, Pastor Jones Wright. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And let let it Jones. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, praise God for the Lord God. My God, that's what I'm running in my feet when she said Pastor Jones was. Woo! Hallelujah, I put a running in my feet. Hallelujah. I felt the Holy Ghost when she said it. Excuse me, y'all. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Ooh, glory in the highest. Y'all been with me tonight. I'm wobbling in my knees tonight. Ooh, glory tonight. In the absence of my husband, Pastor Mary Joe Sr., we thank and praise God for him tonight. Thank God for everybody that pressed out to Bible study. Hallelujah, all the minister, all the saints of God. We got Pastor McConnell in the house tonight. And we do thank God for you. Praise the Lord. My topic tonight is delayed does not mean denied. Hallelujah. You can't, you can't come and talk about something like this, honey, unless some stuff is delayed. Hey, hallelujah. Praise God. We had a scenario in our family where one of our children was disappointed and we began talking, encouraged them and Pastor Jones said, delayed does not mean to not. And it just checked my soul, praise the Lord. Because, you know, in this walk, two main complaints that we have is what's not going right for us and who bothering us. Do y'all agree with that? I heard a little echo, but I know I'm right about it. What's not going right for us and who bothering us? But we want to say tonight, delay does not mean deny. Don't worry so much about how long it's going to take for the breakthrough. Just trust and focus that God's promises are yea and amen. Praise the Lord. Satan wants to discourage us. He wants us to believe that it's not going to happen, that it's not coming. Praise the Lord. He wants us to be weary and well done. But I'm here to tell you tonight, delay does not mean denied. Praise the Lord. So many things, hallelujah, I can think of that just seem like it's just being put off. Hallelujah, it's just wait a minute now. Come on, speed up a little bit. It's taking a little time to get here. Taking time for the door to open. Taking time for the door to close. I'm going to say that again. <laughs> Taking time for the door to close. Everybody pray about an open door, but honey, some doors need to be closed. Amen. Let's go to Daniel. You know, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 talk about that there's a time and there's a season to all things. You know what it say? A time to weep, a time to laugh, time to mourn, time to throw stones, time to gather them right, time for embracing, time to refrain from embracing. We don't believe that sometimes. We think that because we say the fear with the Holy Ghost, everything is by sugar and grace. But sometimes you have to what? Refrain from embracing, right? It's a time to read, it's a time to sow, a time to be silent, a time to speak, right? Delay does not mean deny. Daniel chapter 10, we'll start with verse 1. Prophet, do you have that Daniel chapter 10, start with verse 1. 
let me catch up here. They just then praise the Lord. I could have ran by 10 more laps. Hallelujah. I'm going to keep on running, praise God. Yes, he is. He's a mighty good God. We got to remember that in everything that we go through. God is a good God. Yes, he is. That's right. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that's right, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. Yes. And the thing was true. The thing was what? True. Listen, if God said it, it is true. I don't care that it's taking a while for it to happen. If God said it, it is what? True. True. Go ahead. And the thing was true. But the time appointed was long. Wait, 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 wait. Don't go too fast on me. The time appointed was what? Long. <laughs> the time appointed was what? Long. Long. I love how appointed and long is joined together in a sentence. Who would think? Wait a minute now, y'all. Pump the brakes on that. To think of appointed time and long being in the same sentence, help us, God. But the time of the appointed was what? Long. And what happened? And he understood the thing. Yes. And he had understanding of the vision. Listen, we know what God said. We praise God when he said. But when that clock started ticking and that waiting gets away, we start acting like we don't know what God said. And we lose sight on the vision. Come on, talk to me. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. Somebody say three full weeks. Three full weeks. Wait a minute now, I prayed last night and I'm ready for that thing to move today. He said three full weeks. Sometimes we don't know just how long we be waiting on the thing. I, when I think about that, I think about my husband because my husband ain't slow to get no answer money. I don't care. You can tie your bow tie, you can hook a bow shot, you can do what you want to do, but he ain't going to move until God move him. So you might be waiting on that answer for what? Three whole weeks. Come on. I ate no pleasant bread. I ain't eat no pleasant bread. Neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Okay, keep going. Neither did I anoint myself at all. Put the oil down and just wait. Stop trying to keep anointing yourself thinking it's going to change the time. <laughs> Listen, I, stop. Hold on, let me take a break. I'm going to get tall tired in here. Listen, y'all. Keep coming for that anointing oil thinking it's going to move the clock. Pastor, you with me tonight? Listen, let me go get this all again. Let me get in this prayer line one more time. Praise God and, and, and put the Lord to all down and just wait. All right, now, I just read it out the scripture. Keep going now. Neither did I anoint myself at all. Come on. Three whole weeks were fulfilled. Three what? Whole weeks. Whole weeks. Come on. And then the four and twentieth day of the first month. Yes. Yeah. As I was by the side of the great river, which is Hedeco, mm -hmm. that I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen. Keep reading, we're trying to get somewhere. Whose loins were girdled with fine gold of Euphrates. Mm -hmm. His body was uh, his body also was like the barrel, yep. and his face as the appearance of lightning. Yes. And his eyes as lamps of fire. Go ahead. And his arms and his feet like in the color to polish brass. Go ahead. And the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Yeah. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. Keep reading. For the men that were with me saw not the vision. Come on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It said the men that was with you did what? Saw not the vision. Baby, sometimes people that are walking elbow to elbow with you may not see what you see. You can't get sidetracked by what people see. You have to remember what God said to you. They did not see the vision, right? But they was right there with him. Can you imagine that? Sometimes when, when you think a person should see something, sometimes they don't see it, but you still got to keep your eyes on the promise. Right? Amen. Go ahead. But a great quaking fell upon them. Yep. So that they fled to hide themselves. Okay. Hello, somebody. Therefore... I was left alone. Yes. And saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me. Come on, it's so funny how tonight I felt so drained. I never felt this drain. He didn't know when she came out of office. She said, Hey, why she was so pumped? She was up here, and I was like, Hey, she said, uh uh. Not. I felt like I ain't had no strength in me, my God. But God knew I had to read this verse. Sometimes you get weary and it feel like you don't have any strength in you. 
And that's the way I felt when I was walking to the truck tonight. I'm telling you, I couldn't put one step before the other. Nathan grabbed my hand. He said, come on. He helped me get in the truck. I felt like I didn't have no strength. I told Pastor McConnell, he said, how you doing? I said, hey, I'm going to be on 10 when I leave. Hello? Hallelujah. I feel good, but when I leave here, I'm going to be on 10. You look like I'm on 10 tonight. I think I'm on 10 tonight. Hello? Come on, somebody. So sometimes you can go through trials and tribulation and tests and it feel like you don't have no strength within. But God, come on. No strength in me. For my comeliness was turned in me into corruption. And I retain no strength. Come on. Yet, yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face. I wanted to point out here what he said. He didn't have any strength, but he heard the voice of his words. Sometimes at your weakest, that's when you can hear God the clearest. Hallelujah. When my body was so weak and I was going through, and it seemed like that thing was being delayed and delayed and delayed. Fasting, one movement in prayer. You know, all these things, the saints was praying, and it seemed like it was just taking so long. But God put a song in my spirit. The lost winds may blow and the storms may come, I remain steadfast. He was letting me know, honey, you're going to have to buckle down for this because it's going to be a long ride. Great is your faithfulness to me. I kept saying it over and over and over and over and over and over and over. God was letting me know through the words. I can hear his voice, but I had little strength. I was so weak. My body wasn't acting right. My heart wasn't rocking back. Right? Something was wrong. Hallelujah. But God was moving, but it was just taking a little while. Go ahead. And I was in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. And behold, a hand touched me. Come on. And we set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. Come on. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright. Listen, he said he was on his knees and the palms of hands. That's like a dog. I remember when I was sick, hallelujah, my heart was so weak. I didn't know it. I said, when my husband come in here, he gonna find that I gave up the ghost. Hallelujah. I was so weak. I said, oh my God, I just don't know how I'm gonna make another step. My God, my health just seemed like it was declining and declining and declining. It seemed like I wasn't gonna come out of it. It seemed like it just wasn't moving. Hallelujah. But God moved. I was on my knees. I was on my knees in the palm of my hand. Hallelujah. And I crawled from my bedroom floor. My God, before I knew it, the woman of God she called me, and she said, he's going to carry you through. Hallelujah. She told me, she said, God said, he's going to carry you through. She said, this is a spoken word. She said, I was scared to prophesy to you because you're my friend. Hallelujah. You don't want the person to be so sick. You don't want to speak something in that thing that don't come to pass. You don't want to say hallelujah and miss God. You don't want to get ahead. My God, you don't want to say, God said you're going to live and not die. Hallelujah, and this ain't go the other way. You want to be sure that you're speaking by the mouth of God. But she said, I know, that I know, that I know, that thus says the Lord, he's going to carry you through. You see me here tonight, hallelujah. You see me, hallelujah, God elevated me. He elevated me out of my sick bed. Hallelujah. And here I stand, my God. To God be the glory. Go ahead, woman. Understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, yes. for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. Listen, he said from the first day. Day. You hear me? My heart went out of rhythm the last day of March. And it went on and on and on and on. You mean God heard me the first day? Hallelujah. He said the first day you set your heart to understand. He said, I heard you did. Sometimes it seems like God is not moving. Sometimes it seems like it's not happening. It's happening. It's going to happen in the process. 
process of time. Pastor John said it all that time. It's going to happen in the process of time. Keep waiting on the Lord, saints. He said from the first day, go ahead. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, which stood me. Come on here. One and twenty days. What? One and twenty days. Boy, that devil, he has set himself in opposition against you, and he will fight you for days. He will fight you for days. My heart was out of rhythm for two months. The enemy fought me for days. Hallelujah. But God kept me. He kept me with a heart out of rhythm. He kept me in atheism, my God, because there was more to be discovered. The healing seemed like it was delayed, but there was more to see. See, they could have fixed the heart, but it was an underlying issue going on that God needed to rectify. Praise God. Hallelujah. Y'all know my story. Hallelujah. It's the grace of God that I didn't become septic. Hallelujah. And hallelujah, that didn't go through my bloodstream and kill me. Hallelujah. But God, I thank and praise God for Sister Felicia. Hallelujah. She called me Juicy and she told me a dream. She said, I don't even want to say the dream. She said, hallelujah, she said, if we was in the church and the ambulance had to come and get you out of the church. And she said that, um, to make a long story short, what happened had something to do with an infection. Don't be scared to tell people what God said. Say what God said. She said it, she didn't add to it, and she didn't take away from it. Weeks went on after she said that. <laughs> Get to the hospital, what was it? An infection. We need each other in the body of Christ. We prophesy in part. Praise God, we need each other. Say what you need to say and don't add nothing to it. Don't mind how they gonna receive what you say. I said, baby, just say it. Say it how God gave it to you. Thank God she said it. And she ain't come and say it after the fact that it came out. You know the Lord showed me that you was in the hospital. The Lord told me that you, you know, every last case, get out of here. Just wait till the, the devil and I almost killed me and won't tell me the Lord showed you something. Come tell me now so I can intercede. Go ahead, woman of God. Hello, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. Mm -hmm. And I remained there with the king of Persia. With the kings of Persia. Now I have come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days? For yet the vision is for many. And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face toward the ground. And I became dumb. He said, I became dumb. Mm -hmm. You know, dumb is in reference to mute. Yes. You know, sometimes when you're going through, you just need to become dumb. What mute? Just, just hush. Because when you're going through, you get to saying foolish stuff. You get to talking doubt. You get to talking, you know, talking uh, un unholy talk. When you're going through, because you be so weary in the flesh. But sometimes we need to just become dumb when you go through. Just hush. He said, I became dumb. I set my face toward the ground, and I became dumb. So it behooves us sometimes to become dumb. Habakkuk 2 and 3 says, the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it shall speak and not lie. Don't it tarry, wait for it, it said, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Listen. Don't be weary and well doing sights. Abraham and Sarah had to wait 25 years for the promised son right, to be born, right? Moses had to wait 40 years before leading the nation of Israel out of Egyptian captivity. David. David had to wait seven years between being appointed and anointed, right? Before he took his rightful place on the throne. There was a paralyzed man in the Bible. He waited 38 years before he got, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Lord, thank you, Jesus. For my little two months and a half that I was sick, 38 long years he had his issue. Joseph waited in prison for a purpose, right? Joe waited through suffering, didn't he wait? At the end, he got double for his trouble, didn't he? Anna the prophetess had only been married eight years and her husband died. Can you imagine becoming a widow that soon in marriage? Hallelujah, but she waited on, the, on Jesus, the Messiah.
She waited, praise God. She kept her eyes on Jesus. Even though she lost her husband, her first love, she waited for him. And she was able to see him and lay her eyes upon him. Ain't that all right? Now listen, Jacob waited 14 years for Rachel. He said, the Bible said the love he had for her was so strong, it felt like a few days. Come on now, what are we doing? That's love. You wait 14 years for a woman, and it felt like it was only a few days. Come on now. Now, I want to wrap it up. I want to talk about the fact that I said we need to become dumb when we're going through. Because we don't want to talk foolish talk, and we don't want to speak things on ourselves. We are, uh, the Bible said, we're going to be judged by every idle word that we speak. So, let's go to Genesis real quick. Let's go to Genesis 35. Rachel was upset because she wasn't bearing children so fast. And she said to her husband, give me children else I die. Right? And it made her husband so upset. He said, am I in God's stead to withhold from you the fruit of the womb? He was letting her know, I don't have power to give seed. Right? But I want to say, even though her demise was tragic, it's such a coincidence that she said, else I die. She said, give me children, else I die. And she died in childbirth. Do y'all hear me tonight? We got to be careful. We got to be careful what we say. We got to be careful not to charge God when we're going through, when we're suffering. We got to make sure we don't speak foolish when it's not our turn. Your turn is coming. I promise delay does not mean tonight. So, let's just drop down to verse 19. Wait a minute, I don't want to skip this. Let me go, go to verse 1 right here. Genesis 35 and verse 1. <clears throat> and God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel, and dwell there, and make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Right. Then Jacob said unto his household, and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods that are among you. Right. And be clean and change your garments. So God has spoke to him and he told him to put away the strange gods from among them. And he set the whole household straight. Listen, when I was sick, I said, look, we don't need no sin in the camp. You hear me? If you ain't saved, you need to act like you're saved. You need to walk, you need to talk like you're saved because I don't need God jumping over the foolishness to come here for me to get my breakthrough, right? So he said the whole household, he told them to change their garments, right? And so they got up and what happened? He said, and let us arise and go up to Bethel, and I will make there an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress. God will answer you in your day of distress, saints. Come on. And was with me in the way which I went. Right. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand, and all their earrings which were in their ears. Go ahead. And Jacob hid them under the oak which was by Shechem. Go ahead. And they journeyed, and the terror of God was upon the cities that were round about them. Mm -hmm. And they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. Now you see this? You have to get sin out the camp when you want to win. Man. When you want to win and you want to be victorious in Christ, you got to make sure you get rid of everything that's not like God. Keep going. So Jacob came to Luz, which is in the land of Canaan, that is Bethel, he and all the people that were with him. And he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel, mm -hmm. because there God appeared unto him. Now you see, God appeared unto Jacob right here. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we feel like when we're going through, God is not there. We feel like that we, when, when we're going through that, God does not hear us. It is at the time when God's presence is so strong in your life that you can be going through the hardest trial. But if you're looking through the eyes of the flesh, you won't be able to see it. Keep going. And when he fled from the face of his brother. Right. But Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died. Right. And she was buried beneath Bethel under an oak. Now, he, he, hold on, he just experienced the death right here, right? Sometimes it seems like it be one thing after the other. Back to back, test, trial, tribulation. Come on. 
And the name of it was called Eliam Mashu. Yes. And God appeared unto Jacob again. Yes. And he came out of Panoram and blessed him. Did what? He what? He came out of Panoram and blessed him. Sometimes you can get a blessing and go right to his right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't let them blessings trick you. Don't let them blessings sidetrack you. You can get a blessing and then go through something that'll break your heart so bad. Are you going to charge God? You were smiling when you got the blessing, but when that trial come behind the blessing, we get confused, right? Delay does not mean denied. Keep going. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Mm -hmm. Thy name shall not be called anymore Jacob. Come on. But Israel shall be thy name. Come on, keep on going through to God. Change your name. Come on. Hallelujah. And he called his name Israel. Yeah. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Yes. Be fruitful and multiply. Yes. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. Keep a on. king shall come out of thy loins. Come on, come on. And a land which I gave Abraham and Isaac. To thee I will give it. Yes. And to thy seed after thee will I give the land. Go ahead. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him. You doing what to him? Talk with him. Okay, come on. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him. Yes. Even a pillar of stone. Yes. And he poured a drink offering upon offering thereon. And he poured all thereon. Come on. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spake with him. Where God did what? Spake with him. Come on. Bethel. Go ahead. And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little way to come to Ephraim. Yeah. And Rachel travailed. Rachel did what? Travail. Rachel did what? Travail. Rachel travailed. Go ahead. And she had hard labor. Hard labor. And it came to pass, when she was in hard labor, that the midwife said unto her, Fear not. Thou shalt have this son also. She ain't telling no tale. She definitely gonna have that son. Mm -hmm. But it's another point to that story. Come on. Yeah. And it came to pass as her soul was in departure. Her soul was what? In departing. What happened? She died. You see that? She said, give me children else I die. You see that? It seemed like such a hard trial to be barren, and I can't imagine that because it speaks for itself. But sometimes the fruitful is complaining about being fruitful, the barren is complaining about being barren, everybody want what the other one got, right? Help us, God. We complain, 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 complain. But if she had the choice to choose between barren The choice would have been different, right? Keep reading just a little bit more. For she died, that she called his name Biani. Mm -hmm. God, but his father called him Benjamin. Go ahead. And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephraim, which is Bethlehem. And Jacob set a pillar upon her grave. That is the pillar of Rachel's grave until this day. And that's a pretty tragic story. But it's a lesson not to speak foolish when things are not going the way you think they should. Do y'all know words are like boomerang, they like butcher knives, and once those words go out, you can't pull them back. The older I get, I'm learning more and more to just be sensitive to the word that I speak because once they go out of my mouth, I can't pull them back. Right? So we want to be sensitive when we go going through our trials. We are going to understand that because the thing is delayed, it does not mean denied. Now, I'm just crazy enough to believe that after this message, there's some things going to come unlocked. Some things going to open up. And some things going to stay just the way they are. And the same praise I have when it's going well, I need to have that same praise when it's not. We got to understand that Denied does not mean delay. I'm going to read a few verses and then I'm done. I'm going to go here. It's Hosea chapter 12 and verse 6. For those that's taking notes, Hosea chapter 12, verse 6, it says, Therefore, turn thou to God, keep mercy and judgment. And wait on thy God continually. Right? 
Waiting on your God, how? Continually. Now I'm gonna go to Lamentations 3 and 25. Lamentations 3 and 25. I'm gonna read here, I'm gonna go to Isaiah, I'm gonna go to Psalms, I'm gonna go to Romans. Those last three is one verse in each chapter, and I am finished. Delay does not mean deny. Lamentations 3, verse 25. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. Woo, don't that sound pretty? To the soul that seeketh him. Now you know what you need to do while you're waiting, right? Seek him. It is good that a man should hope. And what? Quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Did I say we need to become dumb? We need to become mute sometimes? It is good for a man that he bear the yoke in his youth. Learn these mechanics. Learn these mechanisms for going through while you're young. So you won't be old still doing silly stuff. So you won't be old still carrying on like ain't nobody raise you. So you can be, you won't be old doing stuff that just don't make no sense, right? Better go while you're young. Isaiah 40, verse 31, for note takers, Isaiah 40, verse 31, it says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Right? All right, Psalms. Psalms 130 verse five. After this, one more, just like I told you. Psalms 130 verse five. It says, I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait, and in his word do I hope. Ain't that pretty? And my last verse is in Romans chapter 12 and verse 7. Sometimes you get anxious, and you feel that anointing, and you feel that unction, and you feel that glory. But sometimes you got to even wait on ministry. Romans chapter 12 and verse 7. Our ministry, let us wait on our ministry or he that teach it on teaching. God bless you. Thank you.